why am I so struggling over this? Like I'm trying to get it to where it's down, but it's like vertically orientated. So like that way it'll catch the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It needs to be like this, but like facing down. I don't know if this is gonna get anything, but it's like, there's only one way to find out. So I wanted it to serve as like, kind of seeing where your hand travels out of your glove. Mm -hmm. And I think it's gonna get it. Just say get like a few connection ball reps in just to have like, reference points for each kind of throw variation. Yeah, get up in here. Right back in here. Huh. Yeah. How come mine didn't freaking read? I like those pants. Thank you. That rep looks probably the closest that I was talking about at ATP with like fine rhythm and looseness in flexion. Yeah. That's what that kind of shows, I would say. Now it's just like, can we repeat it as we give the hand space to move? And and the, the numbers are gonna kind of be a testament to that. See, for me, I'm more of a glove side connection ball guy. 46.3. Yeah, I would say those, I mean, I'll video it so you can see it, but the connection ball and the, without the connection ball look very, very similar. 66. 64.9. Yeah. Feels so good. Okay, so this is the connection ball. That's a little Scherzer P going in there, huh? So now the posture, right, like is, is good. Now we just need to get the hand get going a little bit up. 64.8. I did see, I, I remember you talking about a Yamamoto thing you saw about him doing some like javelin reps. That's really good. And I'll take that 10 times yeah. out of 10. The, the video you sh talked about last time about Yamamoto doing a javelin thing and then just grabbing a baseball. That's the thing, dude, is like, I actually like when your, your reps where you're like your preset hand up so you don't even have to worry about it. The thing that you struggled with is like finding a, a kind of like a cocking mechanism for rhythm. But if you find that like with up, your hand up and just find that by going down into your scap like you're doing there, that would be, I would say more the merrier. You're right. Because now it's like, as you start to rotate, your hand's gonna still be up to where it doesn't have to then dip under, pull, push. It still feels free, because mm -hmm. I know that the misinterpretation of feedback can some sometimes be kind of disconnected with understanding like this isn't f really like a, a stab or a flexed deal. It's flexed in, but yeah. it's it's still like loose to allow yourself to retract. As we get like the, the rhythm down, and as we kind of identify that position that we want to get to, I would just say like, while we have that camera going, getting slow, is play around with like a different throw variation, like each rep, and then give yourself more space potential for your hand, right? Like whether you go figure eight, mm -hmm. give it time for it to go, just because I think the more movement potential you, you give it, the more like solidified that path is going to be over time. Do that one again. I just want to video what it, what it's showing. I mean, your 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 Ew. your stick up there is way better. Remember we couldn't. Ew. Remember when we couldn't quite get that freaking mm -hmm. posture? Now oh, it's good. Ugh. Yeah. Kind of piggybacking off of yesterday. Like once we start getting the right progressions for your timing, like that's a good one for that. And then just I would say a little bit more, just kind of midline emphasis, but yeah. then just start slowly teasing and like, all right, more drive leg, uh -huh. more drive leg. You know what? That looks like exactly like your catcher rep. A set of 10, I'll toss it to you. Set of 10, just like catch side, boom. And then we'll do catcher variations. That's the one. And it's interesting too, because it's like, it almost looks like you're getting up early and then just waiting for your front foot uh -huh. to come down. I think that's gonna help with you over rotating too. Yeah. You essentially tell your body, hey, we're up, we have time. Yeah. Like now we're just waiting on these guys to go. Yeah. If you can maintain your torso positioning there while this hand's kind of up, mm -hmm. great. Yeah, that's the one too, where you start getting low, right? You stay yeah. into that drive leg that entire time, but this just kind of stays here. Right. Same dynamic, but I want you to kind of sit here like a outfield relay. So you're the shortstop, 
say you're going home, I'm gonna toss it and it's just boom, throw. Hey. Right? Dude, it's a little frame. And, and that's why arm. that's so beautiful is I am able to like watch it in, re in real time, freaking 30 frames per second. I thought you were dragging. Oh. I thought for sure, like, because I saw the hand dip out and I saw you try to create more space and attempt to leverage. But dude, like, that's the path that I would say equals up your, your, your lead foot the best. Did you give me a lower one on purpose to yeah. see what I would do? Yeah. Five to ten catcher throws. That looks spicy, dude. Catapult. Because it's cool watching it in real time. Obviously, lower frame rate, but like I can see the point where we were talking about yesterday, like the capturing point, right? The lower half done its rotation, it's anchored, and then there's that little freaking second, not even a second, millisecond. Yeah. That's like, all right, now it's time to freaking go. Yeah. And it's whoo. Yeah. I got an 83. Remember, we're, we're just, we're just 80%, in the we're just in the 80, 90%. That's just not good. Give it up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking 40.3, man. <laughs> yeah, once. Way quicker than him. I don't know. No, it's it's a deep, deep pocket. Hi, Ollie. I got rid of it. My footwork was already done. He's doing his footwork as he catches. Well, that's 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 specifically designed for him. That's a pitcher's thing. Oh, you yeah. want to see real Muto? Well, it's a catcher's thing if you freaking sacrifice a call. Dropping the glove. <laughs> Just don't let this rep like get you to feel like pulling the yeah. ball down, right? That's kind of what it looked like. It looked like you got to that same posture. And then just the rep itself uh -huh. took you to like this guy. Yeah, stay in that that rotating slot. That's the glove side, right? I think the mm -hmm. glove side is really going to emphasize like I'm rotating into that plane. Yeah. Yeah, good. So toss it to me. I'm going to go. Oh. As soon as I toss it, like get into your leg lift. Boom, catch. Little circle there. The difference between your catcher ones is like catch, stay, lead with the elbow, get to your end range. All right, boom, our front foot anchors pull through. That is like, all right, catch, wrap that circle, and then, oh shoot, my lead foot's coming down. Ah, you yeah. know? Like it just looks like the, the path is a lot more compact and simplified for like the ones you're moving your feet. And then you get in the leg lift, you have more time, right? right. So I think your brain's kind of getting like, oh, we need to buy time for our front foot to come down. So like we do that by, Good. Dude, that's saw the, that freaking drive leg. That's the stick, right? Like I felt I, like a per not perfect, but that felt like a really good rep of like drive leg eh, and this goes eh, yeah. and then I'm there. Yeah. And typically you're somebody that will like if we do radar, like we're not throwing it as fast as we can right now, but like your double play funnel throws are usually harder than your leg lift throws. Right. So that right there, that, that's a good testament to I think like getting the path and like you almost stuck it there. Yeah. It was like, hey, you're not freaking going out, dude. You're gonna stay here, and that's gonna allow that freaking number to be a higher than we expect.